Hey guys, welcome to Supercars of London. How are you doing? And hopefully you've been enjoying the last few videos with this, the Ford Mustang 5 litre V8 in gold chrome. Now when Ford launched this car, I fell in love with it. I've always been a fan of the Mustang right from the 1960s up until now. And with this, the new model, when Ford allowed me the opportunity to get behind the wheel and explore a little bit more about the car, I wanted to try and understand the phenomena that is the Ford Mustang. Why is it so popular in America? and now that it is available in Europe I wanted to test it on some European roads and find out why this car for 35 grand in the UK can be an absolute animal. So when Ford offered up the opportunity for me to get behind the wheel, explore and learn a little bit more about the 2015 Mustang, I snapped it with both hands. I can only do one because my other hand is holding the camera. This is a £35,000 car in the UK, but for some reason, it is a fan favourite. I remember pretty much every single Mustang that I see in the UK and in London, mainly because they are quite rare. But now that they're available in Europe for the first time in 50 years, I wanted to jump behind the wheel and find out a little bit more about this beast. So to begin with, let's talk about how this adventure and journey came about. Ford have been incredible to me ever since I met up with them in North America for the Detroit Motor Show when I saw the Shelby GT350R, the Ford uh, GT, and all of the rest of the range, the new Ranger, uh, Fiesta ST, all of those seriously cool cars. We actually took the Fiesta ST down to Monaco for the Formula One this year. And when they said about the Germany press drive, I said, I really, really want to be a part of it. And then two months down the line, they offer me this, the Ford Sweden Gold Chrome Mustang, originally in yellow, the five litre V8 manual, so it's a left hand drive, so it's been quite an interesting morning getting to grips with changing gear with my right hand and um, actually using a clutch for once because in both my Audi A1 and the Lamborghini Gallardo, it's just two pedals, semi-automatic and S-tronic. So this car comes with the clear real tail lights, which I absolutely love. I think now that they're coming back in with Porsche introducing it to their cars, this really, really sets off the rear of the car. It's also been wrapped in gold chrome, which um, definitely isn't to everyone's taste, but at least they've gone to the details of doing the rear diffuser as well, which is quite a cool option on the Ford Mustang. You can have a color coded rear diffuser, which is super cool. And as we walk around the car, you can see that we've got the gloss black multi-spoke wheels with the Brembo brakes, if you have a look down here which are, are an awesome little touch and we've got the five litre badge here we've got satin black wing mirror sam is sitting in the car because he is bored and <laughs> wants to go and the really cool thing about this wrap is they've gone to incredible details like they have wrapped the gold pony as well but from the outside this car is so aggressive you get so many cool angles the lines are incredible and this is the thing that apps <laughs> And this is the thing that wows me with this car. That car is the same price as, as, I don't even know. For a brand new 2015 V8, five litre V8, it is incredible what Ford have been able to do with this car. Overall, the feel of the car is that it is an incredible machine and it definitely feels American when you get behind the wheel. Obviously, this being a left-hand drive car, you feel even more American, but the long and aggressive nose definitely has a presence when you're sitting behind the driver's side. So we've got the Recaro seats here and Sam is currently updating his Instagram, I assume. And inside, check out the classic Mustang feel that you have. Every single Mustang that you see has got the big, chunky steering wheel with the really nice sort of stainless steel finishing touches that actually go the whole way across the dashboard, which is really cool. The doors are a mixture of leather and plastic, which you get here. This is the really, really nice soft leather with the white stitching. And then we've also got plastic there. Mustang for the side kick plates and then three pedals which we rarely see nowadays so it's pretty cool that Mustang offer this car as a manual. Let's start it up, put your foot down on a clutch like you do in, well in my R8 I think it was and then the green light comes on for the engine start and it has got an incredible rumble. Oh. Just direct me. And yeah? Okay. Yeah. So we are driving the manual Mustang. And so far I've had about an hour and a half with this car, just getting used to it, getting used to being on the right hand side of the road in a left hand drive car, changing gear with my right hand. My first impressions of the car, 
one, it's very comfortable, but two, it feels big. You've got the long nose ahead of you and you've got the aggressive, it's almost like triangular shapes either side of the center of the bonnet, which really stand out when you are driving. You don't really know how long the nose is, so you're kind of driving blind on the front, but that's not a bad thing because the majority of the cars you are, you don't actually see the front of the car because you are behind it. <laughs> one thing it does have, is a bit of punch, 435 brake horsepower from a five litre V8. And yes, the body is big, and yes, it feels quite heavy, but in a straight line, and when you wanna push it, this car is seriously quick. The gear ratios are quite strange. The sixth gear, I think, is there purely to try and climb up the fuel economy rate and get that MPG as high as possible. But up until fifth gear, a lot happens with the engine, which is a lot of fun when you're playing around on the autobahn. As we're in Germany, we are exploring some pretty cool roads, both the motorway and country roads. And at the moment, we have got a stunning view which is just incredible. We've got the Alps ahead of us. We are in South Germany, just south of Munich, and having a fantastic drive going into second gear when I thought that was third. So this video is mainly to try and understand what is so special about the Mustang. Is it the looks? Is it the sound? Is it the engine? Or is it the overall package that Ford are able to create with this car? But how do they create such a good looking car with a massive engine at such a low price tag. I'm still getting to grips with um, this gearbox, which is quite clunky, but when you're pushing the car and you're doing quick gear changes as if you're in Fast and the Furious, then um, it does liven up a little bit and it is a lot of fun to use. I wasn't a big fan of the R8 manual gearbox that I had, or manual cars in general. coming along now it's a lot more enjoyable to have some paddles and play as though you're playing on the PlayStation. Maybe that's just my generation, maybe it's just my age, and I just am a bit of a child. We've got steering modes, which come up on here. We've got steering feel. At the moment, I'm currently in sport, which is a bit more direct. We also have comfort. I'm gonna put it in comfort and see what, see what happens there. Okay, this becomes very, very sort of lethargic and quite city-focused, I think. It's very light, and... Uh, looking at where Sam is pointing so that we know where to go. I'm going to keep it in comfort and just try and work out the difference because all day I've been driving it in sport mode. That V8 rumble is incredible and it's probably worth 90% of the price tag that this car comes with. And the steering, yes it is, it is quite sort of bubbly and quite light. It reminds me actually of my girlfriend's Fiat 500s. Um, steering which is a very very city focused car so what Ford have been able to do here with the steering feel is tailor this car to not just American roads but also the European roads that now this car is available in I'm going to put it out of that comfort mode and put it in normal which I assume is the middle ground between comfort and sport and um, yeah you get a lot more feel back but not as much as the sport mode and it just becomes a little bit stiffer but I think American muscle cars or American cars in general are quite known for having quite heavy steering. If they reported this car to the police, I think it would be found pretty easily. I'm not sure how many gold cream Mustangs there are, but I was told that this is the only one in Europe. This car, even though it's got a five litre V8 and everyone's thinking that it's gonna be really, really bad on fuel, it's actually really impressive. It's got some statistics here that I'm gonna read off the screen I don't know how to convert that into MPG, but I was told that it was around 30 to 35 MPG. We are currently doing 12.2 kilometers, one one hundredth. <laughs> per 100 liter. Per 100 liter. I was just reading it exactly off there. And we've got a quarter of a tank and we've got 150 kilometers until empty. Now, it doesn't seem too many, but we have not been driving economically on these country roads. We've just been enjoying the car, learning a lot about the handling, because I think that is such a huge factor with these American cars of stereotype with all sorts of American vehicles that they only go in a straight line and they're not very good at handling. Whereas I've found that this car, on those twisty turning roads, it is very, very good. It is a big car and it is a big engine, but 
the car grips the road very, very well. The steering is nice and direct. You do feel like you're in control of the car and you do feel like you're driving it. Whereas there's some other cars out there that have a lot of driving aids. I'm in the wrong gear again. <laughs> Damn manual gearbox with my right hand. There are cars out there that you don't really feel like you're in control of the car. It feels like the car has got so much technology on all four different wheels and it's braking all at the same time and giving you different tractions and, and all sorts of different technology. I think the McLaren has that technology, which when you're driving it, sometimes you lose the enjoyment of driving. Whereas I feel with this car with three pedals, a gear stick, 435 brake horsepower, and a five litre V8 engine, this car is a lot of fun on the country roads. And I think not only does that speak volume for the Mustang in Europe, but as a car in general. So I think the handling side of it, I am no expert and I have not driven every single car in the world. So I'm probably not the best person to listen to when it comes to the handling of this car, but I am super surprised with how good this car is on the twisty turny roads. We're now heading towards some more mainer roads. So it's gonna be fun to try and find out what this car's like in a straight line, but it is, it is so cool. It is such a cool looking car. It is a cool car and comfortable car to be in. It goes like an animal in a straight line. And then when you get on those twisty roads, it's a lot of fun as well. So I understand why people buy the Mustang. And it's so crazy. When I see a Mustang in the UK, I get very excited and normally post a picture on social media. And then all of you American guys out there that see them pretty much every single day, tell me that there's a flip reverse. So in, the, in London, Maybe I'll take a picture of a Mustang over, let's say, a Lamborghini Gallardo. Whereas in America, there's so many Mustangs that everyone tries to take a picture of the Lamborghini. And as road trips go, this is not bad at all with the views that we have, the car that we have, but also the car. So last, no, last Saturday, me and Sam drove back from Monaco to London in a day. If you haven't seen that video, then make sure you head it over to the Supercars London YouTube channel. I'm also gonna put a link in the description for you guys to just watch that video because I drove the Lamborghini back and my bum was numb, my back started to hurt. The seats, I don't know how you can get seats wrong in a car and I know that the Lamborghini is not the right car for a journey like that or spending 14 hours in any car, I'm pr pretty sure that your bum might start getting numb. However, in this car so far, we have had no problems, I think it is. Here we go, here we go. We have found an autobahn. <laughs> this is where the car shifts. This is where the Mustang really excels. On the back of the car, it says GT, so this is definitely a big GT car. I'm not reading the back, I'm just using it as an example. This car is an awesome GT, it's a cruiser. If you wanna cover long motorway miles, this is such a good car for it. I've just got, like I mentioned, the comfy seats, but it's just effortless power. The suspension really sort of stops, softens up. I'm in sport mode, I might put it into like comfort or something. Everything into comfort and just and just cruise. I know that there is almost a year waiting list to pick up a right hand drive Mustang in the UK, and it is just it's mad, but it's also props to Ford who are being able to see this opportunity to bring the Mustang to the Europe for the first time. What's that? Oh, I thought it was a Crow GT. <laughs> <laughs> what a view. That is the end of my time with this beast. I know that it was only a short trip and hopefully I've done the car justice and maybe we can try and answer what the what the phenomena is about the Mustang because it is just an incredible car. Normally the likes of the Bugatti Veyron, the likes of the Koenigsegg and the Pagani Zondas and all of those cars that everyone knows and everyone loves for being or changing the automotive industry in one way or another. The Mustang has been plodding along and everyone loves that brand and Ford are continually creating awesome looking cars, awesome driving cars 
at such an incredible price point that I just don't think other manufacturers are able to compete with the likes of this. So thank you for watching. Make sure that you head down into the description below to check out some of the links that I've left for you guys, whether that's the videos of the Mustang being built, seeing the Shelby GT350R launch for the first time, and the two vlogs of being out here in Munich. So thank you to Ford for allowing me to have this opportunity to get behind the wheel of this incredible machine. And I cannot wait until it comes to the UK in right-hand drive form for me to drive again. <laughs>